News 4 Jack starts right now with a breaking news alert. We continue to follow breaking news. Jacksonville police still blanketing a west side neighborhood trying to find any trace of missing brother and sister just six and five years old. The sheriff says searchers have found nothing as they look on the ground, from the air, and in the water. And now you're looking live at the scene from above on Sky 4. The Amber Alert, it went out a little more than 24 hours ago for the two small children who were last seen by a family member more than 30 hours ago. According to the sheriff's office, six-year-old Braxton Williams and his five-year-old sister, Brya were in their front yard at a mobile home park off West Bieber Street when they vanished. Police say foul play could be involved, and they're looking into multiple scenarios. We have crews all around the family's neighborhood in White House on the west side. We begin with Joy Purdy, who is reporting to us live from the scene. Joy. Mary, as you can see, night has fallen and the pocket of police vehicles and fire and rescue vehicles that were here, they have gone. There is just one police vehicle with us now, and it's hard to see the officers who are walking around in the complex at this point. This is where it gets tricky. Our crime and safety expert, Ken Jefferson, talked about it, how difficult it is to see at night. And let me tell you, with all the woods around here, the police officers were nice enough to give me this bug spray. We're being eaten alive out here. So all of those who are searching the community, they are still out here despite it all because they want to find these children. We're gonna focus on the family during this half hour. We know a little bit about the parents. Uh, the mother's name is Bianca Jackson and the father's name is Brian Williams. Brian, I actually spoke with briefly over the phone and he wants to thank everyone for their continued efforts looking for his children. And he is hoping that nobody gives up. Nobody gives out hope for finding his children. Also, the sheriff's office speaking about the family earlier today, saying that they have no reason to believe that anyone close to the children is involved in their disappearance, saying that the parents are being very cooperative with police. They do live together here at the Paradise Village Mobile Home uh, Park. They are living together and there's no record of domestic violence. That's according to the sheriff. I also got to speak with a cousin of the children's mother stopped by. She happened to be searching the woods where we are right near these train tracks and she stopped to talk about what she thinks happened. You know, I lost a child in the past and I just don't want this to be the same way because I hate to see them have to suffer like that and then they have, it's two kids. We don't know if the kids was taken or what's going on, but we just won't. If somebody took the kids, just please bring the kids back to us. Don't let their mother and father suffer. They love their kids. Please just bring them home. We beg of you in the name of Jesus, just bring them home to us. That woman kind enough to speak with us. She came from Lake City here to be with her family, checking on the mother, especially because that is her cousin. She says she's just distraught. The mother is, is inconsolable at times, just worried about her children, as you can imagine. We've also been speaking with the children's paternal grandmother, who has told us a lot about the children's personalities and more about them. Scott Johnson is standing by with more on what you know, Scott, from the grandmother. Joy, she says they are normal five and six year old child, what you would expect. They like their video games, they like to play, and now they are missing. I'm at the edge of one of the sections of woods that police have been uh, looking into. I've seen crews go in and out of these woods, searching as best they can, but still no sign of these two small children. The family of Braxton and Briah Williams has kept, for the most part, publicly silent, except their grandmother, Roxanne Lloyd, who tells us they were typical children. Happy kids. I mean, you know, just basic kids. They love to play, you know, they love to play with the phones, love to look at cartoons, stuff like that. Lloyd adds the parents were up most of the night devastated, praying someone may find the two. Not good, no sleep, not eating. Worried, scared, you know, devastated. They was tore up last night, but they finally probably just dozed off probably about 30 minutes ago and I bust in the house to wake them up, but um, they trying to get a little rest. Sky 4 has been above the scene all day, which has been brimming with dozens of police officers and firefighters helping in the search. Police say the family has been cooperating and they are questioning numerous people in the area, including sex offenders and predators who live within certain radius of the home. 
but so far no evidence of where they are has been found. I also want to point out that that's Beaver Street, US 90. You may travel on it if you live on the west side. Well, it's right here at the edge of the property line for the mobile home park, as well as the woods where I am in front of right now. A lot of people have been driving out here throughout the day. They've had to slow down because of emergency vehicles and all the crews out here. It's just a, just a big scene out here. A little quiet right there for the moment, but that can change at any minute. So if you are coming by the area, just be uh, cautious that there's a lot going on outside this mobile home park on West Beaver Street, where I am live. Scott Johnson, Channel 4, the local station. Scott, thank you. Scott is about a mile down the road this way from us. We are at one entrance of the Paradise Village mobile home park here. It's almost like a U shape. If you were to go in this way, you can go all the way around and come out another entrance, which is farther down. Janice is there. There's a command center that's there as well. And, you know, it seems like most of the searching is being done right here and in the vicinity around the mobile home park. But as we heard from our crime and safety analyst, Ken Jefferson earlier, that's what we see. That Amber Alert went out for the entire state. And Ken says anything could be possible at this point, but he let us know what he thinks. To explore every single possibility. If when we look at what the father said, that he left for a brief moment to go in the house to get some meat to put out on the, on the grill, and they came back and they were gone, they didn't just run away. More than likely, they didn't just run away. Someone has, I believe someone has them. It's my professional opinion that someone picked them up, abducted them, uh, and took them somewhere. The compelling question is who? Who would want to do that? Of course, no one wants to think the worst. No one wants to think that that's that they're out here somewhere alone. No one wants to think that someone took them. But everybody is still being positive. You've seen searchers all day long still with that same fire, that same fervor, looking for these two children. And the community feels the same way. Allison Henning spoke with some of them in our area right here. Everyone hoping for the best at this point. Right now, I'm at a church about a mile down the road from where you are, Joy. This has kind of been the hub for JSO throughout the day today, at least for search crews. And though it does seem to be winding down a little bit here tonight, there are marked and unmarked police cars all around this area. We've also seen buses coming and going from this church, bringing crews to and from the main search area just down the road. Also, not far from here in the Walker's Hamlet subdivision, there was a large presence of firemen and police searching for Braxton and Brya. Crews searched a wooded area behind that neighborhood and a pond right in the middle of it. One neighbor told us JSO handed out pamphlets with the siblings' pictures on it as they went door to door. People we spoke with who lived nearby this church hope there was a break in this case sooner than later. There's got to be something. There's got to be something. Something, there's something missing. There's a, there's a link missing here. I am concerned, is sad that our children cannot take and play in the front yard without being supervised 24-7. It's scary. And Sheriff Mike Williams telling us earlier today calling off this search isn't even a thought right now. Crews are focused on the task at hand, and that is finding Braxton and Briah. In fact, an officer just came by with one of these flyers. He told us they're actually out of these flyers at this hub right now. He told me they're going to be printing a thousand more tonight to hand out to, to hand out tomorrow throughout the day. So they are continuing their efforts. Reporting live tonight, Allison Henning, Channel 4, the local station. Allison, thank you. You know, folks, whether you have children, grandchildren, even if you don't have children, there are children in your neighborhood, in your life somehow. Everyone's heart is going out for this family. Everyone needs to look at those pictures of those children. Even if you don't live here, they could be anywhere. So take a good look at their pictures. Go to newsforjacks.com, look at their pictures, and, and just be on the lookout. That's all that anyone, especially the family, is asking. Coming up at 6.30, you know, even little children are out here helping with this search. You're going to hear from some of them and see what their thoughts are, knowing that someone else their age is missing. For now, we are live on the west side. Joy Purdy, Channel 4, the local station. Tom, Mary. All right, thank you, Joy. And here's a look at what JSO says they need from the community. As they search for these children, they ask people to check any home surveillance video they may have if they live within a few miles. Also check abandoned cars. 
check under mobile homes, and check sheds. These are all things police say could help them turn up any signs of the children.